The month of November is here and that also means that the second last update for Home Assistant of the Year has also arrived, 2022.11. This month sees us gain some fruits of the labour of the month of what the hack, including the ability to monitor water usage in the energy dashboard, a better way to reload automations, new template features and two brand new cards to display on your dashboards. The first new card is called the Tile Card and according to the Home Assistant developers, is the first card that will bring in a new style of cards into Home Assistant dashboards, likely due to hiring of front-end developer Paul into Nabucasa, who you may be familiar with for creating the mushroom cards. The tile card is pretty much an upgrade of the entities card, giving you a quick overview of your devices and entities at a glance. If you tap on the icon of the card itself, it will toggle the entity, or if you tap the actual main body of the card, it will bring up the More Info dialog box. You can also customise the card a bit more than was previously possible by setting options for the icon colours. The second new card is called the Statistics card, not to be confused with the Statistics Graph card. The new Statistics card can show a single value of a long-term statistic for an entity without having to create an additional helper. So you can quickly and easily create a minimum, maximum, average or change value of a sensor over a given time period. Very useful if you want to quickly glance at an entity to get a meaningful value without having to create an additional entity or helper. Next up, a much requested feature during month of what the hack, with more than 370 votes on this one particular feature, the ability to track water usage inside of Home Assistant. The energy dashboard already provides the ability to track different energy usage, including grid power, solar and gas. So adding water consumption in here was the obvious play and it looks fantastic. Now I don't have a way to track water consumption just yet, so I can't really show you much of the energy dashboard and we don't even really pay for water here in Scotland either, so it's not too relevant for me. But if you are in a country where water bills exist, this is a really useful feature and I'm sure one lots of you will be excited to see. Love it. Now, if you've ever added a light to Home Assistant that has a color temperature control, you will have seen that when you change the color temperature, it was measured in something called MyReds, which gave a number that's maybe not all that meaningful depending on which part of the world you are from. With 2022.11, the default measurement has changed to Kelvin instead, which is likely something you are more familiar with. You will see this change in the UI when selecting a colour temperature on your dashboards or when creating automations and scripts. Speaking of more UI changes, 2022.11 also sees long-term statistics added to the more information dialogue for entities where it is applicable to show it. This lets you see the long-term statistics quickly and easily at a glance without having to dive into more details, which is a nice little helpful addition. Another addition some may find helpful depending on which part of the world you are from is the ability to change the first day of the week, meaning that date ranges, schedules, calendars and automations will take this into account when displaying the week. This is a configurable setting in your user profile. Another feature that was added as a result of what the hack is that automations and scripts are now reloaded much more intelligently. So previously, if an automation was in the process of running and had something like a wait or a delay inside of it and was paused, adding a new automation would cause all automations to restart and the previously running one would never actually complete. Well, now with 2022.11, adding new automations or changing existing ones either through the UI or YAML will only cause the changed ones to be reloaded, with anything else unchanged to be left as is meaning that any longer running automations should be left untouched. Finally, for the big stuff, we have a new template feature, also as a result of what the hack topic, which allows you to use a state attribute and states as a filter, along with is state and is state attribute as a test in your templates. You can also add a default value to the average function. And finally, there is a new method allowing you to look up native IDs of entities. As for the little things this month, we have quite a lot of cool little additions. Firstly, Shelly Gen 2 devices that are battery powered are now supported devices. The Jellyfin integration now has media player support. The MQTT integration now supports update entities so that you can update 
from the Home Assistant dashboard. Fully Kiosk Browser now allows you to remotely change a URL, which is super useful. And the generic camera integration shows you a preview of your URL you are configuring so that you know if you are entering the correct details. Nice. This month sees us with three new integrations, including the all important Oral-B toothbrush integration, along with two new integrations now available to set up in the UI instead of via YAML. As for breaking changes this month, it's a relatively small list, which is great to see, and I don't see anything major at all, but please make sure to have a read through the breaking changes for yourself as always. And that is about going to do it for this video. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on your new favorite feature down below in the comments. For me, it's probably got to be the new reloading of automations. That is an extremely simple but welcome addition that will make automations more reliable in the long run. But I suspect the water tracking feature will also be a huge one for some of you, depending on where you live. So do let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to drop it a like and get subscribed if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video.